Uh, we should be good. OK, yeah, we're good. OK. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Margaret Vale, and I'm the Systems and Data Services Librarian at St. Francis Xavier University. Um, CALL CBUA represents member libraries across the region, all of whom sit on the unceded and traditional territories of the First Peoples. In Newfoundland and Labrador, our library sits on the homelands of the Inuit of Nanastavit and Nunukavit, the Inu of Nitsanian, the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq peoples. In Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia, we find our friends and colleagues situated on the territory of the Mi'kmaq. In New Brunswick, libraries are found on the land of the Wolastawig, Mi'kmaq, and Passamakotis peoples. We at CALL CBUA wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the First Peoples who share their ancestral homelands with us all. On behalf of CALL CBUA, the Digital Preservation Stewardship Committee, and our partners, ACENET and NGO Portage, I would like to welcome you to the 2021 CALL CBUA Research Data Management Series. Um, the franchisation of this event is made possible through a collaboration of the members of the Research Data Management Working Group of the Bureau de la Cou... No. De la Cooperation Intervention. Okay, sorry, I apologize. BCI, I'm not going to try and say that again. Um, special thanks to our organizers, myself, uh, Cynthia Lize, Cynthia Holt, Aaron McPherson, Louise Gillis, Allison Farrell, Lydia Vermaiden, Jennifer Abel, Jonathan Dory, and Victoria Volkanova. This session is being recorded and will be available after the presentation on the CALL CBOA website. We ask that all attendees please mute their microphones and turn off their webcams during this presentation. If you have any technical problems, um, please type them in the chat and I will be available to help you. Um, please remember to be kind, courteous and respectful of the presenters and other attendees. I'd like to I'd like now to introduce Michelle Fash, who will be speaking on leveraging advanced digital research infrastructure to support research data management. Michelle Fash is the Director of Business Development at ACENET. Michelle has been in the marketing field for almost 30 years. Her work spanning both public and private sectors and a variety of industries. Along the way, she's worked in the public affairs with the Department of National Defense in Ottawa, marketed fries for McCain Foods Canada, sand and gravel for Nova Scotia's Shaw Group, and medical devices for Uplift Technologies. She's also done private consulting with organizations ranging from startups to large national to large nationals. Within ACENET, Michelle is responsible for marketing and outreach. Uh, please join me in welcoming Michelle Fash. Thank you very much, Margaret. I appreciate that. I'm going to start the uh, PowerPoint here. Uh, so thank you uh, everyone for attending today. We appreciate the opportunity to uh, have a chat with you about this. And I, I hope you all walk away with some new information. Uh, with me today, uh, briefly mentioned by Margaret, is Lydia Vermaiden. Lydia is our research consultant responsible for humanities and social sciences. Uh, so she works with uh, researchers in that domain throughout Atlantic Canada. And Lydia also happens to be the chair of the Compute Canada Working Group on Humanities and Social Sciences. So she uh, very much brings a national perspective as well as a regional perspective. So she's here, uh, she'll be answering, I think, uh, a lot of your questions in the chat. I can't see the chat, unfortunately. And if you have uh, questions, Lydia will interrupt me at any time to, uh, to answer anything or ask me to answer anything verbally if that's needed, okay? So um, really today we're, we're hoping that you can walk away with a few things. What, you know, what is ACENET and Compute Canada and what, what do we mean when we're talking about advanced digital research tools? Um, how can these tools be applied to your research? How does this uh, link up with research data management? And what are some next steps that you can take? So these, this is a, a number of terms that uh, most of you have probably heard along the way. Uh, when we're talking about advanced digital research infrastructure, these are the sorts of things that we're talking about. Uh, so it's a Michelle? lot of jargon. Yes, sorry. Um, it's not showing the next slide. Me. 
It's, so what are you seeing right now? I'm so seeing the first slide. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. This worked the other day when we did it, didn't it, Cynthia? Yes, it did. Um, so odd. That is odd. Are you still just seeing the first one? Yeah. OK. Hi, none of us are seeing any slides, just the little bubble with the M on it. Oh, I see. I'm seeing the actual slides. Uh, stop sharing and then try sharing again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can, we can hear you, Margaret. Okay. You're going to have to share the old way. The new way doesn't work for everybody. What's the old way? Um, where you share your screen and not use the. Because um, there's a new way to share in Teams and that doesn't work for everyone. So, okay. Yeah, so tr try sharing your screen. The screen as opposed to the. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you have to share the screen instead of the presenter mode. OK. OK, and then. OK, so what do you see now? Do you see the. Do you, yes, we, we see the first see slide. Do and you if you, the there you go. All Perfect. right. So I guess all those jargon terms really didn't make any sense to anybody. Uh, there we go. So the, the, this is the jargon that I'm talking about. Um, this all relates to advanced digital research infrastructure and it, it, essentially what we're talking about here uh, are things that are above and beyond the capability of traditional computers. Um, either that or they take much, much longer on a traditional computer. So things like analyzing very large data sets. Um, when you're dealing with uh, lots of, of storage, you need lots of storage. We're talking, you know, terabytes as opposed to gigabytes. And um, when you need persistent hosting of things like web portals or you're doing cloud applications. So that's the sort of thing that we're talking about in terms of advanced digital research infrastructure. And uh, using these tools enables you also to collaborate with your partners in a very safe, um, reliable space that's backed up and it keeps your data in Canada. Um, your data is available only to the people that you designate as having access. Uh, and, and it also takes into account, you know, some data needs uh, need to meet very specific security, de um, security needs. Uh, and, and that can vary depending on the sensitivity of the data. So it, it, the, other, the other point I wanted to make with this is, um, you know, if you think back a number of years, even back when I began with ACENET about six or seven years ago, um, or a little bit longer now, you know, when we talked about a lot of the things on this slide, it was really in the context of, you know, quote, the, the big science uh, kind of stuff, you know, physics and, and um, you know, chemistry, that kind of thing. But what we've really seen over the last few years is, uh, because of the size of data sets that are coming in now across all sectors and all disciplines, these tools are really, they, they apply anywhere in almost any research discipline and, uh, you know, going into the private sector, just about any, any industry um, is, is also utilizing or can take advantage of these tools. So uh, just you know, to talk a little bit about how they can be applied uh, for people in the, the physical and applied sciences, uh, you're really mostly talking about the high performance computing end of things and parallel computing. So they're creating very complex mathematical models um, and using those models to explore relationships among different variables and predict outcomes. Uh, or in parallel computing, they're taking extremely large problems and then breaking them apart into lots and lots of little problems. And then those problems get sort of ferreted out across um, connected computer systems so that they all these different computer um, cores work on them at the same time. When we're talking humanities and social sciences, um, it tends to be, you know, more about data and 
and just lots of, of data and the need to process it or um, parse it or do do different things with the data and often uh, working in cloud space as well. So when you're using these kinds of tools, um, you know, good research data management practices are, are very important. Uh, if you're using, you know, high performance computing power, if you're trying to be efficient with your, your project and data, uh, ensuring that your collaborators have safe and efficient access to data, uh, trying to keep the data safe and secure, and when you need lots of space. Uh, so all of these things, when you're utilizing advanced digital research tools, good research data management practices are very important. So what is ACENET? What, what do we do? Where do we come into the, the, the ecosystem? Uh, basically, we and our regional partners uh, elsewhere in, in Calcul Quebec, Compute Ontario and out west, we provide access to digital research infrastructure, to consulting and support through people like Lydia, and we provide a lot of uh, training and skills development in this area. Uh, in the case of ACENET, we started around 2003. Uh, we were started by researchers and we work for researchers and that, that is still true today. Um, so, you know, traditionally years ago, researchers used their grant money to buy their own servers and they'd stick them in broom closets down the hall from their office without proper ventilation or proper security and some poor grad student had got um, tagged with having to be responsible for it and manage it and all that sort of thing and it really was, was unwieldy, particularly as the, the growth in the use of these uh, tools was, was happening. So basically, these you know researchers got together, um, pooled their their talents, their resources, and organizations like AceNet uh, came out of that. So today we serve over 350 faculty in Atlantic Canada, and along with their research teams, this puts us at over 1,100 users, and that's just in Atlantic Canada. AceNet uh, receives. Oops, sorry. ACENET receives uh, our funding both from federal and provincial governments and because of that our services are free of charge to academic researchers and their teams. Um, ACENET and, and our other three regional partners are partnered nationally with the organization called Compute Canada. Uh, that's our, our national partner at the moment and Compute Canada is responsible for, you know, ensuring uh, the, the most effective allocation of the scarce funding dollars for, for research infrastructure, for digital research infrastructure. Um, it tries to ensure that researchers across the country have equitable access to the tools and people no matter where they are. And it ensures that digital research infrastructure and, and that community has a single and a strong voice at the national tables. Um, so when I say currently, uh, some of you may be aware that uh, Compute Canada will only be our national partner for another few months. Uh, as of the beginning of April in 2022, a new organization has come into being uh, that will take over the role of Compute Canada. Uh, and this uh, happened uh, for a number of reasons, which I won't get into, but uh, traditionally uh, we have been funded by the Canada Foundation for Innovation at the national level. We, going forward, will be funded by ICED. Uh, so a new organization was created uh, to manage that. And that organization will handle not just the digital research tools that I'm talking about here, but also formally the research data management um, that up until now has been part of the, the CARL and the Portage network. Uh, a number of those people are now with this new organization. And the other aspect uh, that it will take over is, is research software, which currently resides with Canary. So uh, th there's a bit of a name change going on, which I'll, I'll mention here, and you can see the logo in the bottom left uh, hand corner of the slide. Uh, 
The Digital Research Alliance of Canada is the name of the organization that will be taking over us in, in April. Uh, it began sort of about two and a half years ago with this trans transition, and it had a temporary name that you've probably all heard by now uh, called Endrio, uh, which it's a horrible name and it's a horrible acronym and it's even worse in French. Um, <clears throat> but at the time that uh, the organization came into being, it had to incorporate, so it had to choose a temporary name. So that's where that came from, the new digital research uh, infrastructure organization. So that, as of about a month or two ago, has changed to the Digital Research Alliance of Canada. And uh, they will be our partner uh, going forward in April. So, as I mentioned, we provide access to shared uh, research computing infrastructure. Um, we have five national systems across the Canada with uh, or across the country with lots of computing power, loads of storage, uh, a number of um, uh, cloud virtual uh, CPUs available, uh, extensive ranges of uh, an extensive range of software, um, sta stable and secure backup systems, and uh, we have uh, of particular interest. Uh, we license a platform called Globus, which is a means of uh, transferring very large volumes of data, um, typically terabytes of data. Uh, and it does so in a way that's really easy to use. It's it's a system we call, or a platform we call Fire and Forget. Um, it's, it's that easy. It maximizes the bandwidth usage. It provides automatic fault recovery. So it's a really great way to move large amounts of data around. In terms of our, our consulting and our support, uh, ACENET is made up of 20 staff. Uh, 17 of those are technical people like Lydia and others and system, uh, sorry, system administrators. We are based throughout Atlantic Canada uh, at a number of campuses um, and we're located, we have people in each province. Uh, most of our people have advanced degrees. They have research experience uh, that combined with their technical expertise uh, makes them ideal uh, for the roles that they're in. So they're, they're very effective at bridging that gap between research and technology. Uh, we also have a number of specialists. I've, I've listed uh, them down in the bottom right hand corner there, but uh, we have specialists in cloud, uh, in data management, uh, humanities and social sciences, as you know, machine learning, data visualization, and cybersecurity. And essentially, ACENET and the, our sister organizations, outside of us, there's really no other organization in Canada that are like us and able to deliver the, the sorts of services that we do. Skills development is a big, big part of what we do. Uh, so we offer training, regular training throughout the year. Uh, it's group training. Sometimes we do individual training or small group training that's very specific to the needs of a particular research group or a particular discipline. Uh, it ranges from novice to advanced, um, can be customized. We have a number of boot camps. So, and more than that, on our website, if you, if you go to the training page on our website, you'll see links to um, webinars, to slide decks, uh, to, you know, we, we've got a wiki, so, and Compute Canada uh, itself also has a wiki documentation. So there's lots of, uh, lots of information, and lots of resources around. And the skills that, um, that are developed through these training programs, I think it's important to point out that they're, they're skills that are needed for the future across all disciplines. Um, you know, we help develop students and we help develop HQP in the region and these skills are needed by researchers and they're also needed by industry. Um, so they're, they're highly relevant. Data management and accessibility going forward under the Digital Research Alliance of Canada. You know, the, these are the um, sort of the Portage uh, Alliance people that uh, provide, you know, a lot of this, um, a lot of this work. Uh, and it's going to become much more integral to the regions um, going forward as well. We're, we're sort of, we're, we're somewhat getting up to speed on it. People like Lydia are far more up to speed on it than I am, for example. Uh, but we, we, we provide training in that realm. We help you store data, share files securely using things like Globus. 
um, the uh, further federated research data repository. Um, you know, that that's a great single platform for, you know, ensuring that research data is ingested, curated, preserved, discovered, cited, and, and easily shared. Uh, we also help with uh, grant support. So the, the national systems that I mentioned a few minutes ago uh, don't necessarily work for every researcher. There could be a number of different reasons. It could be having to do with the volume of compute power that they need. Um, it just isn't conducive to a shared system. Uh, or it could be the, the nature of the data that they're, they're working with uh, that require, um, you know, a, a different type of security or what have you. So uh, we do work with researchers who need, for whatever reason, to get a system more oriented to their own needs. And we are able to uh, work through the process with them and integrate these systems uh, into you know, the, the national systems. Or in the case of ACENET, we have a system here in Atlantic Canada that we can, um, that we can use for that purpose as well. Uh, and essentially what that means is that, uh, you know, the researcher gets first access to that, to that integrated system or contributed system, but then any sort of space left over on it can get pushed back into the shared environment. So what that results in is, is a much better, that you know, the, the system is being used at a higher capacity. Um, it's a better, uh, if you will, return on investment of, of public dollars uh, that go into purchasing these things. But uh, ACENET, you know, we've got almost 20 years of experience in managing systems. So, you know, by integrating um, them with our system, it, it enables us to take all of that workload off of the researcher. So we provide the systems administration, the cybersecurity, we help write that portion of the grant, we can help in the RFP process and through the procurement. And then we'll, you know, when the, the system arrives, we install it and maintain it, operate it, all of that, all of that stuff. So it's, a, it's really a win-win situation all the way around. Uh, just to mention some upcoming training that we have, uh, and of course the first one started three days ago, so it's not actually upcoming, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Um, it's likely going to be repleted at some point during the, the, the winter session. Um, Lydia can, can perhaps speak to that at the end, uh, but that's an introductory programming for, for humanities and social sciences. Uh, we also got have you know a couple of other sessions coming back in January. We ran them first in September, and the I believe the feedback uh, was very positive on them. One is the basics to computers, and the other is a, a general course on spreadsheets. And then, of course, there is the Compute Canada uh, Winter um, Humanities and Social Sciences series, which we um, Lydia got off the ground this past February uh, and is going to do again this coming February. So you, the web link down below there is to the training page of our website, the Skills Development. You can take a look at the catalog that, that we have of all the various training um, workshops that we offer. And we do, each one indicates the audience that it's oriented to. And you can also see the, the calendar of upcoming training. So you can see what events are coming up. Uh, just sort of finishing off um, this, uh, the, the, the presentation side of this, you know, even if you are just, you have an inkling of a project in your head, you think it might have some sort of a, uh, of a uh, digital research tool aspect to it, uh, or you already have a project that you're working on. Uh, if you're thinking of using a commercial cloud service, or you're thinking about uh, purchasing uh, a computer or a server for your own use, for your own research project, it's worth having a conversation to us, with us, sorry, not to us. Um, you can reach out to anybody on our team. I, I'll, the next slide has some contact information though, but it's, it's worth a conversation to see whether or not we can give you a hand. Uh, and if we can't, we're, you know, nine times out of 10, we know somebody who can, and we're, we're able to refer you to somebody else as well. So uh, it's, it's always worth a conversation to see, um, to see if there's a way that we might be able to help you. 
And here's a little bit of contact information. So that's our website. You can find quite a bit on our website. There's a, the, the way we just relaunched it recently, but um, there is a, a section there devoted to uh, sort of physical and applied sciences. There's another section devoted to humanities and social sciences. And then there's a lot of uh, general information as well. And, and I mentioned our uh, skills development page uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, feel free to, to email us at info at ACENET. Uh, and then I, I plunked, uh, unbeknownst to Lydia, I plunked her email address in there as well. Uh, if you want to get in touch with her directly um, and, and she has a wealth of information and can help point you in the right direction as well. So that's it for the formal part of the presentation. I'll uh, stop sharing the screen and uh, see if I can see everybody in the audience. Presuming I didn't lose anybody. Is everybody still there? Oh, we're still here. Oh, good. It was so silent. I thought everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Are there any questions or anything going on in the chat? Uh, I've answered a few questions in the chat, uh, but anyone, if you have uh, some more questions, feel free to put them in, ch in the chat, or if you want to come on mic and ask them, uh, and we'll try to uh, address them one at a time. Do I everybody ask at once? Okay. Oh, cloud services. Two questions. Okay. Um, you mentioned cloud services, your place storage like Dropbox. Well, um, sort of. Uh, so you have to think about uh, the storage that we do is is perhaps a little bit less uh, like Dropbox in terms of the user interface, um, and uh, so the way that it's designed to work. Uh, sort of with your with your laptop or with like with your email or Google Drive. Um, so there tends to be a bit more security around the type of storage that we do. So so we tend to use uh, things like SSH keys to secure it and that kind of thing. Um, but we are able to do large file sharing and moving that around with with say Globus portal, um, which does give you sort of a nice interface to work with. So. There can be a little bit more of a learning curve to go with um, moving files around and that kind of thing with our storage, but but it is much more secure than something like Dropbox. Um, do you think in concert? Do you, sorry? Do you work in concert with Scholars Portal Dataverse? Um, I could explain a little better. Uh, it was more of. We have further Scholars Portal Dataverse, and then we have AceNet's storage options. Like, how do they all interconnect, or like, how do you know which one do I go to? Uh, those types ah, of things. Yes. Uh, so I can definitely answer that. Uh, so our storage is really designed for the active stage of the project. So you are like in the middle of your in the middle of the research. You're gathering the research. You're analyzing the research. You are doing stuff to it. Maybe it's changing a lot. Um, it's not ready to be published to the world, perhaps. It's not ready to be shared across, you know, um, to the research world. Um, uh, or, you're, you, you know, you need to use these advanced digital tools with it. So uh, that, that active stage is, is, tends to be where we shine in terms of storage. Uh, if you're looking to archive uh, your data, um, then you might, or, you know, share it, make it make it open, make it publicly available. Now you're looking at something like uh, further or, um, you know, uh, Dataverse. So it depends a little bit where you are in the stage. We do have some options for storage that is more um, long term, so inactive storage. And we have very, very high limits in terms of the, you know, the terabytes that you can put into is called nearline or tape storage. 
Uh, and it can be very handy if you have very large, awkward amounts of data that you're not ready to archive, but you're not really doing something with at the moment. So sometimes this could be backups, this could be something else, um, but that is that is also an option. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, I think it was Cynthia's question. Yes, thank you. That that puts them all into context. Good, good. Um, how do you coordinate your sport, especially around RDM and skills development with contacts at individual universities, such as the library? Ah, yes. So, <laughs> are you, you're muted, Michelle. Oh, sorry about that. I just, I put a bit of an answer in there, but maybe you want to just expand on what I, I said. So, the, the, the Portage Network has been integrated into the Digital Research Alliance of Canada, and a number of those people are now in the Alliance. So those people are coordinating with libraries uh, all the time, and they're starting to coordinate more with the, the Compute Canada folks as well in the regions to try to align the training in RDM uh, yeah. more so than it's been in the past. So, so I'll say this, uh, I have made it a key priority for the humanities and social sciences national team to integrate RDM as a pillar of the advanced digital research infrastructure and education that we do. So part of that has involved me spending a lot of time getting to know the Portage group, getting to know sort of their expertise and where they fit in the ecosystem, making introductions uh, with them and researchers that I know that they're less familiar with, uh, meeting with librarians, making sure that um, those relationships and connections are are in place. Uh, and as a result of that, um, you know, we're here today talking to you at a at a uh, uh, presentation by the Atlantic Libraries uh, that that series. So you know, being involved in that's part of it. Uh, and then uh, in our February series, we're we're actually going to have a day where um, I've sort of uh, given over to the uh, portage group and said, what what can we do in a, in a day as part of this series that's, that would we'd like to Canadian researchers to know about RDM? So they've sort of taken that and run with it. Um, and so we'll have a couple of uh, sessions focused on that. Um, we're also, the national team is also exploring how we can better integrate uh, research data management education into the education that we already do with researchers that's more focused on things like high performance computing. And how can we change the focus a little bit? So all of that I expect to improve and develop um, over the next year. Um, but that's that's the direction we're headed is to really, um, yeah, join everybody up so everyone's on the same page and everything, you know, makes sense and works together. Um, the next question, uh, I, I'm sort of going back and forth with Victoria here. It's probably easy for, easier for me to read the questions for you, Lydia, than the other way around. Um, so okay. how, op how often would the files stored be backed up on, to other servers? That's a question from Joyce. Uh, so it depends. Uh, it depends what system you're on. Um, there's very, speci you, very specific um, specs on the different systems, uh, and that's something you if you have specific requirements, you can find out which system is going to be best fit them. Uh, for some, I think it's like days, like every day or something like that. Um, for some of them, it's a bit longer. So it just depends a little bit on what uh, what your constraints are. You can also set it up if you need, you know, for example, uh, our cloud is extremely flexible. Um, so if you wanted to back some stuff up in the cloud, um, using our infrastructure, you could set it up very specifically uh, to to back up on your schedule, uh, for example. I think that's the last question, other than Victoria asking something about a researcher consultation, and I just was curious what field of research uh, it was. But okay, so do you? It was it was in political science. Political oh, okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think Lydia would be happy to talk. To I would be very happy to talk to her. Uh, what Excellent. institution is she at? Uh, well, she is at the uh, Université de Moncton. Okay. And she is doing a project uh, about um, electoral promises oh. of politicians. So it's uh, yeah. Very cool. Very well, yeah, cool. I want to read the results of that one. Yeah. Yeah. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'll direct her to you. Thank you. Yes. Is she um. Is she francophone? Yes, she is, but the project is bilingual, so it's uh, okay. 
Yeah. Do you? Uh, I can just. I will. I will. My my French is is getting better. Um. So I'll just make sure I have someone with me who is who has slightly better French that, than I do as well. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it will be. It will be fine. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Um, the next question is: Do you have a process for the retention of older data? Meaning, do researchers have to sign something each year to keep their data secure, just to avoid the issue of abandoned data sets? Oh, <laughs> this is what does happen. Um, you you don't have to sign something each year, but but you do have to do some paperwork each year, um, and that renews your account. And that means that all your accounts, all your projects uh, stay active. Um, if, if you're not active, we don't just delete your data um, or throw it away. Uh, I believe we sort of go back to, um, there, there's a bit of a process in place um, where we sort of reach out to you and let you know that this is happening and that if you want to continue doing stuff, then you need to renew your account. And then if you don't, then if you want to continue to keep your data uh, long term, then then you need to, to pull it out. Uh, it would be rare that we would end up in a situation where we'd be at the point where we'd say, OK, <laughs> this project has not been touched in 10 years. We can't get a response from anyone. We are going to get rid of it. Um, that's that's not a not a common uh, issue that happens. Uh, so for your active storage options, what's the best set of descriptions you would suggest we link from your website or otherwise when referring researchers to available shared infrastructure supports? Recommend uh, how researchers should access uh, should account for access to your shared storage infrastructure in their grant proposals. I think we need a bit of clarification on that question. So I would say if you're looking at storage options, there is some there's some pretty good descriptions on our website. Uh, both on the humanities and social sciences page. I think there's a section on storage. Uh, and I believe there's one on the, let me confirm that to you. And I'll just dump the link in the chat. Um, we talk about research data management and accessibility. We have a section on that. Uh, database as a service and Globus and then cloud development space. So it's sort of, we don't necessarily have a storage summary, but we have a, a summary of, uh, thanks Michelle, yeah, all our sort of services sort of framed in that humanities and social sciences lens. Uh, and then for physical and applied sciences, um, we have less detail. <laughs> on that page. <laughs> so I would say the most complete description of their services and how they could apply spe uh, specifically when it comes to things like storage and moving data around. Uh, check out the humanities and social sciences page. Um, no, we don't have a lot of storage and, and <laughs> the, not, not a lot of science. More focused on the computing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not that they don't need storage, but they, they have fewer <laughs> They have fewer unusual questions about it, shall we say. Um, do you have any on how? Oh, I'm referring to in grants. So it depends a little bit uh, when it comes to grant. It's, it depends a little bit on the grant and the domain and whether you know, you're looking at using our, our supercomputer cluster storage or a near line or whether this is going in the cloud. So. I would say if you are thinking about using our infrastructure uh, in a grant, the, the other thing that we do is we do provide letters of support for in-kind contributions. So if you're like, yes, I want to use, you know, Ascent Compute Canada's uh, servers to store this part of my project, um, I'm going to be submitting a grant, uh, email me and we might, I can probably help you with the wording of what you're asking for, make sure it's actually um, going to work for your project the way you think it will, uh, or hope it will, <laughs> and uh, and we can look at um, uh, if it would be helpful for you to have a, a letter of support as well. Um, so, 
yeah, I would say if, if you're at that spot uh, where you want want to put in a grant, I would say reach out to us uh, so we can make sure that that we are give, giving you the right advice there. Thank you. That's really helpful. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for your question. And that's all the questions we have right at the moment. Great questions. Yeah. I'm also I'm on I'm on campus at St. Francis Xavier University. Like actually today in this moment, <laughs> um, I'm back. Uh, so if you happen to be uh, at that institution uh, and you want to see me in person, I am in Nicholson Tower at Graduate Services or um, Research Services. Yep. Uh, Cynthia. Um, yeah, so a quick question. So ACENET is focused on the Atlantic region. Um, we do may, we may have some attendees here who are from other regions. Are there equivalents and who might they be? Yes. There are three other equivalents. There is Calcul Quebec, um, obviously Quebec, Compute Ontario in Ontario, and Westgrid, which handles the prairies in BC. Um, I, we can give you contacts at any of those organizations, but probably if you wanted to reach something right this moment, uh, the best email would be info at computecanada.ca and, and then we can direct you to the right person in the region, depending on what your question is or what you're looking for. I will also say if you, whatever region you're in, uh, if you are, part of the humanities and social sciences plus crowd, which is basically everyone who has not been served uh, directly by the traditional um, not, you know, physical sciences uh, computing model. So this is humanities, social sciences, political sciences, economics, education, uh, business, arts, business. Thank you. I was like, I know I'm missing one big one. Um, or you know, uh, public health. I've I've had lots of conversations with biologists and nurses, and um, a little little bit in medicine. Uh, so if you know, for whatever reason, you're not you're not really fitting into uh, sort of the traditional you know astrophysics or particle physics crowd, uh, and you have a question, uh, this is the uh, national team. I'm just putting it in the chat here. Um, email for humanities and social sciences um plus <laughs> um and uh if if you have any any uh questions uh and you're anywhere across the country you can uh email that and uh i will sort of uh respond and also try and connect you with somebody uh local to you in your region uh possibly at your institution depending on whether we have a staff station here Well, thank you both. This has been fantastic. I'm not sure, Margaret, are you still? I, I can't tell if you're in the background or not. Um, but feel free to unmute. Oh. So her, her, your mic's not working again, but I will say the thank yous then. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Michelle, uh, for your presentation and also Lydia, uh, for actually to both of you for, uh, for uh, answering all of our questions today. Um, they were very helpful because we've had this series and this is the, the last, it's sort of the, Okay, we've ha we've had the nitty gritty, but we really need to know how everything interconnects and what who can help us uh, in our journey. Um, so thank you so much. It was it was fantastic, and uh, we re I learned a lot definitely. Uh, it's it's much clearer in my head how everybody connects and what what AceNet does as compared to what Scholars Portal does or Compute Canada or other places. Um, so. Thanks, and uh, we, I'm sure you'll be getting a lot of follow-up communications, <laughs> so it's nice to have those faces with the, with the names now as well. 
Um, so, uh, and just to let everybody who's on the um, on the in the meeting with us or in the webinar, uh, this will be uh, it has been recorded. It will be uploaded to the call website uh, probably tomorrow uh, with a transcript uh, as good as the transcript this teams can be. Uh, but it will have both of those up there on the website tomorrow, and I'll send out a message to all of the uh, attendees here today uh, when it is actually up. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And on behalf of Lydia and I and the entire digital research infrastructure ecosystem, we are so sorry that it's so complex. <laughs> and we are yeah. working to make it better and more simple, and we will get there. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. Thank you for bearing with us, and thank you for, for uh, inviting us to be here today uh, so we could connect with all of you. And yeah, we're, we're so happy to answer any questions uh, related to anything you guys might be wondering about. Thanks so much. Thanks.